Chester presents the Screen Guild Players. The Screen Guild play tonight, Holiday Inn. The starring players, this is Bing Crosby. And this is Dana Shore. Tonight, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in musical highlights from Paramount Pictures' tuneful film, Holiday Inn, starring Bing Crosby as Jim Hardy and Diana Shore as Linda Mason. This is the story of Jim Hardy, a man with an idea. Oh, pardon me, Brother Bradley. A man with three ideas. Three? Yep. The first one came to me when Lila Dixon and Ted Hanover and myself, we were doing a song and dance act in a New York nightclub. Uh-huh. I had an idea that I would marry Lila, quit show business, and settle down on a farm in Connecticut. Well, sounds great. How'd the idea work out? Didn't work. Just when I felt sorry for Ted because Lila was marrying me and... We'd leave him looking for two new partners. Ted gave Lila a quick fireside chat. Mm -hmm. He sold her on staying in the act with him, and when I walked out to go to the farm, I walked out alone. I've had better ideas, I think. Well, uh, tell me, Jim, what was the next idea? Holiday Inn. See, it didn't take me too long to learn that a farm was no place for a lazy boy. So I decided to change the farmhouse into a roadside nightclub, open on holidays only, and featuring shows built around each particular holiday. I even had a show planned for uh, Hitler's funeral. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what made you think Hitler would be buried on a holiday? Oh, brother, any day he's buried will be a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote special songs for all the holidays, and then I began looking for some talent. I see. I was planning to open on Christmas Eve, but the game was called off on account of no one showing up. Not even performers. Boy, I was really feeling feeling sorry for myself on Christmas Day. And then Santa Claus brought me Linda Mason. And when I saw Linda, well, I began to get another idea. See, I can still remember the first day when, when she came up to the farm and she asked me for a job. Could you use me in your show, Mr. Hardy? Well, I don't know. I might find a spot for you somewhere. What can you do? Oh, I'd dance a little and sing. See, I couldn't guarantee any salary at first. Right now, I've got the ledger in an iron lung. Oh, I don't care if you pay me off in eggs. Pay off in eggs? Lady, you've either got me mixed up with Bob Hope or some millionaire. (laughs) Please give me a chance. Well, I want to see what you can do here. Uh, You know, this uh, sort of gives me a chance to keep a little promise I made to myself. I swore I was going to sing this song here at the inn tonight. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen Hear sleigh bells in the snow White Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your days be merry and bright And may all your I'll pitch you the word. I'm of a white Christmas. Just like the ones I used to know. 
Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops listen Where the treetops listen And children listen And children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow I'm dreaming of a white Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your days be merry Thanks a lot, Mr. Hardy. I want to tell you, though, there's a, there's a string tied to it. Oh, I was afraid it was too good to be true. Yep. From now on, you've got to start calling me Jim. Well, between this here and that there, Brother B, I want to tell you, Linda and I managed to talk enough musicians and entertainers into taking a chance with us to... Let us open Holiday Inn on New Year's Eve. Mm. Ah, the joint was packed. I was standing in the corner, pounding myself on the back for having hit the jackpot, when the lights went off again all over the world. Just to give everything a nice, ironic touch, Linda was singing Happy Holiday when trouble staggered in. Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! While the merry bells keep ringing, may your every wish come true. Happy holiday, happy holiday. May the calendar keep ringing happy holidays to you. If you're burdened down with trouble, if your nerves are wearing thin, pack your load down the road and come to Holiday Inn. If the traffic noise affects you, like a squeaky violin, kick your cares down the stairs. Come on to Holiday Inn. If you can't find someone who will set your heart a whirl, take your car and motor to the home of Boy Meets Girl. If you're laid up with a breakdown, throw away your vitamins. Don't get worse. Just catch a hold of your nerves and come to Holiday Inn. Happy holiday, happy holiday, may the calendar keep ringing, happy holiday to you. Oh, I want to tell you, Brother B, that gal could really sing the socks off. Yes, indeed. Well, no one's going to argue with you about that, Jim, but, uh, well, if I'm not being too obtrusive, let's get back to the trouble you said staggered in the Holiday Inn. Oh, yes, the trouble. Yes, the trouble. Well, it was my former partner and throat cutter, Dick Ted Hanover. Uh (laughs) Ted staggered in with a compound alcoholic fracture. (laughs) This boy was loaded. There was nothing wrong with his propensity for grabbing my girls. He walked right over to Linda and began dancing with her, and just watching them dance together, I had a hunch that my days with Linda were numbered. The next morning, though, when I went into the room where I had put Ted to sort of sleep it off, I began to think I had a chance to, uh... Good morning, Ted. Got a little head, huh? Oh. Say, where... where am I? You're in Holiday Inn. Well, how did I get here? Who brought me? Haven't you heard about the stork? This is no time for your alleged comedy. Lila left me. What? Yeah, I got a wire from her at the theater telling me she was quitting me. Going to marry some Texas millionaire or something. Uh Uh-oh. Uh, then I had a drink. A drink? Brother, you couldn't hit the floor with a handful of hominy. (laughs) Say, uh, 
I seem to remember dancing with some girl after I got here last night. Girl? Girl? Yeah, yeah. I'm beginning to remember a few things. Gee, she was a perfect partner for me. Now that Lila's left me, I have to get a new partner. And that girl, she's just the girl for me. Oh, no, Ted. I think you're, you're much better off doing a single. You're huh? a born soloist, you know, old boy. Oh, no, 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 Jim. No, sir. I've got to get that girl for a partner. Gee, if I could only remember what she looked like. You don't remember? No, no. I Say, wait a minute. You saw her. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, describe her. Oh, well, uh, I wasn't watching very closely, you know. She was, uh, oh, I would say she was a medium, medium-built sort of a girl with a medium face. She had a, she had a nice evening gown on with a, with a sort of a Balma can back. You're a great help, you are. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's really nothing at all. Happy to do it for you. Uh, just the same, I got a hunch. I'm going to find that girl, and believe me, she's worth waiting for. Hmm, well, where are you going to find her? Uh, right here. I have a hunch she'll be back here for the next holiday. Well, how do you like that for a guy moving in on me, Brother B? Well, Jim, couldn't you have told him she was your girl and asked him to keep away from her? Oh, you can't be that naive. True, old boy. Don't you remember Lila? Oh, Ted made a habit of stealing my girls away from mm. me. My only chance to hang on to Linda was to keep her out of Ted's sight until I had enough cabbage in the bank to ask her to marry me. And for the next holiday, Lincoln's birthday, I decided that Linda and I, we were going to work in Blackface to keep Ted from discovering her. Well, she wasn't too happy either when I broke the idea to her about it. Oh, Jim, I look terrible in that stuff. No, you won't. I don't even know how to put it on. I'll put it on for you. I'm an old boot black, you know. <laughs> well, let's see. Here we go now. For a month and a half, I've been dreaming about how pretty I was going to look tonight. Well, you'll have plenty of times to be pretty. Say, you know, I was just going to ask you if you'd like to be in the rest of the shows out here. You were? Will you? Will I? I just wish I didn't have to work in that florist shop all the other days in the year to make these few possible. Well, maybe a little later on when we start doing better, we... Well, you can stay out here all the time. Did you hear what you just said? I just caught the last part of it then. <laughs> Was it a proposal? Well, it sure will be when I get a few bucks in the bank. Gosh, you're a strange duck. You don't even give me a chance to say darling and throw my arms around you. Oh, you'd better wait until you see my bank book. Well, I guess I'm sort of engaged. Yes, and I guess we'd better sort of start the show, too. Come on, we can't just uh, sing here in the dressing room. On up. President, and now he's in the Hall of Fame, a most respected gem. And that is why we celebrate this blessed February day. Abraham, Abraham. USA United Thanks to one whose name was Nancy Hanks. Abraham, Abraham. She gave this land its finest son. Whoever went to Washington, Abraham, Abraham. When somebody told him General Grant was drinking every night, he answered, "Go see if you can get all my generals tied." That's why it's celebrated. Just a moment with the second half of our musical highlight from Holiday Inn. But first, a word from our hostess, Lady Esther. I've received so many letters lately from women living in Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Chicago, and other cities where there are numerous defense plants and where the air is filled with smoke and flying dust. They tell me what a problem it is to keep their skin really clean these days. 
And many of them tell me they began to notice their skin getting dull and muddy looking. And they began to notice blemishes here and there. But what a difference, they tell me, since they began using Lady Esther for purpose face cream. Many of them tell me their skin never looked cleaner and fresher, never looked smoother. Now, I wish I could read you these hundreds of enthusiastic letters because they prove that Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream does far more for your skin than just an ordinary cleansing cream. But I want to do more than that. I want to send you a generous tube of Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream free so that you can try it on your own skin and see the thrilling results for yourself. After all, what better proof can there be than to see a thing with your own eyes? If your skin is taking a lot of extra punishment these days, especially if it's being exposed more than usual and getting a little dry and rough, a little muddy looking, you'll want to take advantage of my offer. I'll send you enough cream for a whole week's trial, and you can see for yourself how Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream not only thoroughly cleans your skin, but softens it, helps nature refine the pores, and even leaves a smooth, flattering base for powder. Just send me your name and address on the back of a penny postcard. By return mail, you'll receive your gift tube of Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream and the nine different shades of Lady Esther Face Powder. All the address you need is Lady Esther, Chicago. And now we raise the curtain again on Holiday Inn, starring Dinah Shore as Linda Mason and Bing Crosby as Jim Hardy. Uh, go on to the story of Holiday Inn, Jim. Tell me, uh, did the blackface disguise keep Ted from discovering Linda? Yeah, but uh, he came back like gangbusters. He promised <laughs> to come uh, two days later for Valentine's Day, and even I couldn't figure out a legitimate excuse for, for putting Linda in blackface on Valentine's uh -huh. Day. So I decided to take Cupid right by the bowstrings and set myself solid with Linda. And I had a special song all whipped up for her when she came back for rehearsal. I called it, uh, Be Careful, It's My Heart. I wasn't kidding either. Be careful, it's my heart. It's not my watch. You're holding, it's my heart. It's not the note I sent you that you quickly burned. It's not the book I lent you that you never returned. Remember, it's my heart. The heart with which so willingly I part It's yours to take, to keep or break But please, before you start Be careful It's my heart Jim, from where I'm standing, that certainly should have set you in pretty solid with Linda. Well, I thought it was pretty beamy, you know, nice low key and everything, but yeah. nothing happened. While I was singing, <laughs> Ted finally found Linda, and he moved right in. Back in. Oh, he moved in with a crash. He set himself up in business at Holiday Inn, dancing with uh, Linda, you know, on the holiday shows, yeah. and dividing the rest of his time between making love to her and trying to sell her on leaving me in Holiday Inn to head for the big time as his dancing partner. And mm -hmm. I managed to... Come out of my corner punch, you know. I was swinging, swinging right from China. And on Easter Sunday, I was sure I had Ted on the run when Linda joined me in the, the big Easter parade. In your Easter bonnet With all the frills upon it You'll be the grandest lady In the Easter parade Oh, 
over We'll be the proudest couple In the Easter parade On the avenue The photographers will snap us And you'll find that you're In the royal Jim, that, huh? that really should have eliminated Hanover, huh? Well, I thought he'd take a fast count, but Ted promoted a couple of Hollywood talent scouts to come out to the inn. A couple of boys from Hollywood and signed Linda and himself up. Uh, they got a picture contract, yep. huh? That's what they did in a little epic titled Holiday Inn. Now, wait. You mean they stole your idea and made it into a picture? Oh, no. When Ted stole my girl, I gave him the idea for the picture. And that was the end of everything, huh? Practically. I closed up Holiday Inn after Ted and Linda left, and I just sat around feeling sorry for myself. And on Thanksgiving Day, I read in the gossip columns that they were going to be married as soon as they finished the picture. Well, then I was really ready for the river. And then Mamie, my housekeeper, she took me in hand and gave me sort of a chalk talk on chickadees and their chicaneries. Closing up the end and setting around like a jellyfish. Just cause a slicker stole your gal and you ain't got fight enough to get her back. I tried to keep her here, Mamie. What kind of keeping was that? Nothing but tricks. If you hadn't made Miss Linda mad, hiring that driver to keep her away from the end the night them Hollywood scouts was here, and then acting like she couldn't be trusted to stay with you in the face of temptation, she'd still be here. Why, right now, if you went to Hollywood and told Miss Linda how much you love her and misses her, that is, if you told her the way a lady likes to hear it, huh, I'll bet you she'd be the quickest ex-movie star that ever ex. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just what do you have in mind? Grab yourself a handful of train and get on out to Hollywood. Well, and then what? See, after all, I can't just walk up to a girl I'm in love with and I haven't seen her in several months and say, uh, Dr. Livingston, I presume, or something. Well, now, see here, Mr. Jim. I can tell you to get out to Hollywood and I can also advise you to take Miss Lynn in your arms and crush her. But after that, Mr. Jim, you got to put the pressure on yourself. Yeah. Well, did you take Mamie's advice, Jim? Well, I had nothing to lose, Brad. I, I walked onto the lot where they were making the movie version of Holiday Inn. Just as they were about to shoot the last scene of the picture. Mm. I want to tell you, it gave me a, something of a start. Because that movie set looked exactly like my Connecticut farmhouse. The artificial snow coming down from above, it really took me back to that Christmas day when Linda showed up at Holiday Inn looking for a job. And then Linda began singing White Christmas, and well, I mustered up enough nerve to walk right into the scene. When it was all over, Ted Hanover was looking for a new partner, and Linda and I were off to see a man about a license. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the Oh. Uh-huh. 
Thank you, Bing Crosby and Diana Shore, for your wonderful singing of the musical highlights from Paramount Pictures' Holiday Inn. It was a real musical treat, one that we of the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will long, long remember. Well, it's nice to hear you say that, Truman, but I know somebody who'll remember the program longer than anyone. Really, Diana? Friend of yours? Well, in a way, her name's Diana Shore. I've always wanted to sing with Bing the King. Well, that makes it a standoff then, Diana, because Crosby has always wanted to sing with Diana and the Dixie Diva. Oh, <laughs> well, we couldn't have found a better place to do it, Bing, right on this program for the benefit of the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Anything you'd like to add, sir? Well, I was going to say something about uh, next week's program, but I guess it can wait, Diana. All right. I'd like to ask you all to listen to an interesting free offer from one of our best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Thank you, Miss Shore. Perhaps many of you listening to me tonight have promised yourself at one time or another to try Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. Perhaps you wanted to see for yourself if it really does four important things for your skin, but you never actually got around to trying it. Well, here's your chance to try it without buying it. Here's all I ask you to do. Just send your name and address on the back of a penny postcard. As soon as that postcard arrives here, I'll see that a generous tube of my Four Purpose Face Cream... Also, my nine exciting shades of Lady Esther face powder are put into the mail and start on their journey to you. Now, there will be enough Lady Esther four-purpose face cream for at least a week's trial. And during that period, I'd like you to watch your skin and see how my cream does these four things. One, how it thoroughly cleans your skin. Two, how it softens your skin and relieves dryness. Three, how it helps nature refine the pores. And four, how it leaves a perfect base for powder. You see, if you really want to try my four-purpose face cream, here's your chance. Write your postcard tonight or first thing tomorrow and just address it to Lady Esther, Chicago. I'm sorry, but this offer is for residents of the United States only. Wartime restrictions prevent me from extending the offer to residents of Canada. And now, here is Bing Crosby. Your Uncle Sam has asked me to say something tonight to every young woman listening to our program. Your uncle has an urgent and vital need for thousands of student nurses to keep America fighting and working. To win this war, we must keep well, and it's up to you to keep us that way. All you healthy girls between 18 and 35 who are citizens and high school graduates, please write immediately to Student Nurses, Box 88, New York City. Now about next week's Lady Esther program, it's a, it's a rib-tickling comedy about a ham actor who got mixed up with the Nazis. It's called To Be or Not To Be, and it stars Sig Ruman, John Hall, and Mr. and Mrs. William Powell. Next week, then, Mr. and Mrs. William Powell, John Hall, and Sig Ruman in To Be or Not To Be, a laugh a minute for 30 minutes. Bing Crosby of the Kraft Music Hall is soon to be seen in Paramount's all-star production, Star Spangled Rhythm. Diana Shore will soon be seen in Thank Your Lucky Stars, and can now be heard on the Eddie Cantor and her own programs. Music on tonight's show was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Our radio adaptation was for Bill Hampton. The Screen Guild players are presented every Monday night by courtesy of Lady Esther. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther, saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.